So for question six, like I was saying, we're going to use the xy intercept method for this because it's easiest in this case because we don't have a y all by itself somewhere. Like like on question five, remember, see how you had the y all by itself? And that's why the table method was best. Or for the previous question four, that was also the case. But for question six, we don't have the y isolated. So to do the xy intercept method, it's like the table. You just make up a table like this. What's this? You just go, um, you just go x, y, okay? Okay, can you do that? So write that down, x, y, right? And make a little table, okay? And then the trick is you do this. Plug a zero in for x, and then afterwards, down here, we're going to plug a zero in for y. Can you do that? Zero, zero. You got that? So make sure you do that. Once, you've do, once you do that, then you're good to go. Okay, because I know you can do the rest. Because the rest is it just follows like this. X is zero, solve for y. What's this? When x is zero, what's this equation going to look like? It's going to be six times zero minus nine y equals eighteen, right? So you see what we did there? We said, we're just looking at this and saying, okay, x is zero, so we're going to plug zero in for x. And then just play with that. See what happens, right? <laughs> because once you have that, it, it logically follows what you're going to do. If, you, if you're used to solving equations, you'll just get this and go, okay, I guess I'll just keep playing with it. So what's six times zero? Oh, I guess that's zero minus nine y equals 18, okay? And then what do you do? Well, you could just write, well, that's the same thing as just negative 9y equals 18, right? Then what do you do? So if you're used to solving equations, you'll just keep working on this, like, you know, automatically. And it says negative 9 times y equals 18. And what do you usually do in this case? So you undo multiplying by negative 9. So you divide by negative 9 on both sides, okay? And you should be familiar with that. Divide both sides by negative 9, okay? And you get positive y equals 18 over negative 9, negative 2. That's a positive over negative gives a negative, right? y equals negative 2. What am I going to do with that? Well, this all started from deciding to plug 0 in for x. And when I plug 0 in for x, I plugged it into the equation and I calculated and I found that when x is 0, y is negative 2. So when x is 0 in this equation, y is negative 2, and I put the negative 2 there. Isn't that nice? Right? What do you think you do? And so we have a point on the, on the graph, 0, negative 2. Where is that point? x is 0, y is negative 2. x is 0, y is negative 2. Find that point. That is here. x is 0, y is negative 1, negative 2 down here. See that? Okay, so we have one point on the line, just like that. How about when y is 0, what do, you, what do you have? When y is 0, what can you do with that? Look at the equation we're working with. 6x minus 9y equals 18. Plug 0 in for what? x or y. Plug 0 in for y. Plug 0 in for y. So you have 6x minus 9 times 0 equals 18. Does that make sense? I'm plugging 0 in for y in this case. And then if you use the solving equations, you'll look at that and you'll start playing with it and, and working on it and see what happens. So go ahead and work on that equation and see what happens. So you'll get 6x minus, and 9 times 0 was what? 0 equals 18, right? And 6x minus 0 gives what? 6x, and that's equal to 18, right? And how do you solve that? x is being multiplied by 6, so to get x by itself we need to divide by 6 on both sides. See that? So we get x equals, and what's 18 over 6? 3. Now, what do you think you do with that number? So let's recall what we just did there. 
this this x y intercept method to do it you just plug 0 in for x and then 0 in for y. When we plug 0 in for y we, we plug that 0 into the equation in place of y right and we calculate and we find x is 3. So what it's saying is when for this equation when the y value is 0 the x value is 3 and where do we put the 3? Put it here and now you have another point. You have the point 3 0. Isn't that simple? x is 3, 1, 2, 3, y is 0, right? y is 0. So where is that point on the graph? It is right here. And then we join up the points carefully with a ruler and that's our line. And so that's the xy intercept method. How do you memorize which point is the x-intercept and which point is the y-intercept? Well, instead of trying to think, oh, the x-intercept is when x is 0 or y is 0 and the y-intercept is when y is 0 or x is 0 and you get it all confused, look at the graph. Which point hits the x-axis and which point intercepts the y-axis? Which point is where? So this point is on which axis? This point is on the x-axis, isn't it? So that is the x-intercept, isn't it? And what about this point? This point is on the y-axis, and so that is called the y-intercept point, okay? And that's how you know because this one's on the x-axis, this is on the y-axis, so that's what they have to be, right?